All right. Good evening, um, caregivers and families. Uh, we're very excited to be here tonight to share with you the high school program of studies. My name is Barbara Gould, and I'm the Director of Counseling, Health, and Wellness for West Windsor Plainsville School District. Um, and here this evening, we have a number of individuals who will be sharing different parts of our program of studies. Uh, this morning, I had the opportunity to speak with uh, your children over at GMS and share a little bit about what the exciting things that are coming up for them. Um, and I was joined by our counseling team from High School South and also a number of our peer leaders who shared some great opportunities uh, for your students. And so just sit back and enjoy um, just a couple of logistics. We always get the question of whether or not we're recording uh, the webinar. The answer is yes, uh, the webinar is being recorded and will be posted um, sometime next week on the district website in case you wanted to view it again. Um, in addition, on our district website, uh, we have all of the information um, and the resources and the links um, that we might share, as well as this presentation. All of those things will be uh, posted under counseling department um, under program of studies. So if you needed to reference it later on, you will have the ability to do so. Uh, we have turned off the chat for right now, um, just so that we can focus on the different presentations and um, so that we can also um, save our questions for the end, because many of the questions do get answered throughout the presentation. And so we will turn the chat feature on towards the end, um, but for now we have turned it off, just in case you're trying to, um, you know, if you think of a question, just jot it down and we will come back to it at some point. So I'm joined this evening. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce you to um, High School South's principal, uh, Jessica Sincata, and she will just um, open up and welcome you. Thank you so much, Barbara. Everyone, welcome to High School South from your homes. Um, we're thrilled to have so many people on the call, and I welcome you to the being parents and guardians and caregivers of future pirates. I'm sure a number of you out there have current pirates um, or past pirates for those already off in college or the workforce. Um, but High School South is a special place where we look forward to growing, caring for, and learning about your students. Um, tonight is focused on how you will be talking with your students about their time between 740 and 250 next year. Well, that's the focus of tonight. I just want you to know that so many important things happen after 250 to look forward to. The stuff after school, the clubs, the activities, the music, the sports, the theater, all of those things will come in time and strengthen the connections that, ha that happen and that are formed in the classroom. So not only do I want everyone to get excited about the course selection process um, over the next month, month to two months, but really I'm just excited to see um, how interests and passions can blossom throughout these next four years at High School South. So I greet you with all the pirate pride and spirit in the world. Um, we proudly wear our green and gold, and I appreciate Ms. Gould putting on a gold, uh, a gold sweater this evening. She knew where she was coming. Um, so welcome. Uh, enjoy this evening, and just know we're going to take really good care of your kids next year. Thanks so much, Barbara. Thank you, Ms. Sankata. Um, so for tonight's agenda, uh, we will be talking about uh, just the, in general, high school transition, all of the supports that are available um, for your child or children uh, as they enter into high school and into this new phase. We also will review a little bit about um, course requirements for each of the content areas in order for students to graduate. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about um, specifically ninth grade, what, what a typical schedule might look like for a ninth grader and review um, different things such as option two and other extracurricular opportunities. And then at the very end, um, our counseling team will share with you most frequently asked questions that parents have as students are transitioning into high school. Um, and we will then open up the chat for additional questions. 
So the first and I think most important thing about high school transition um, that I'd like to share with you is that your children will be okay. All of the, there are so many different individuals um, at the high school who are there to take care of them, um, you know, who are open and willing from their teachers to their counselors, to administration, um, coaches, mentors. And so this is a, an amazing opportunity for them. And the, the high school process um, and the transition isn't that, you know, significant. They're going to be okay as long as we work together and we collaborate. Um, so make sure that, you know, if there's anything that's important to be shared, you know, that we continue to communicate, communicating frequently with, you know, your children's teachers, um, as well as, you know, their, um, you know, their counselors. Uh, as you will find, um, the school counselor will travel and be with your student for the rest of their high school career. And therefore that person is, is probably, you know, the relationship that you really want to foster at the high school level, um, because they will be able to support your, your student, you know, socially, emotionally, academically, and whatever else might come along the way. Um, be informed. This is a really important one. I know that we get a lot of emails, and we send a lot of emails as a district. Um, however, um, it's really important that you read those emails so that you don't miss opportunities um, for your children, that you don't miss deadlines, um, that you don't miss, you know, requirements for certain uh, programs that might be coming up. And so, you know, it's critical. That is our way of communicating as a district. We do send district emails. And, you know, although our WhatsApp family groups, um, you know, and, and the way that you've communicated with your peers and other parents, um, you know, we know that that's a way that parents communicate. However, you know, please rely on the, the district information because that information is the most accurate. In addition to that, um, our district website has a wealth of information as well. So any upcoming events that might be happening will be posted on our dis district website as well as High School South um, has their own school uh, website. And there's there are really great resources there with you know, frequently asked questions, uh, where do you find certain things, et cetera. And anything related to the program of studies is also available online um, on our district website. So please you know, use that as a resource for you. Also, um, I wanted to share with you that um, Google Classroom is a way that um, teachers specifically communicate um, and club advisors and sometimes coaches as well communicate with uh, students throughout, you know, throughout the year. And so um, anytime, you know, you can always ask your student to go on to their Google Classroom and you are able to see those communications. Um, teachers post resources on there. And if you didn't know this, you have access to your child's login by going into Genesis as a parent. You're able to see their login information, both their password um, and also their login, which then would give you access to their Google Classrooms. And then I think um, this will be talked about a lot, um, really thinking about a balance when making choices about high school, you know, there is plenty of time for students to um, figure out things that they, you know, are passionate about, um, to take, you know, rigorous um, courses. And so not to overwhelm and not to overload their schedules, because they do need time to be able to take care of themselves, and also downtime so that they don't feel um, overly stressed or anxious about school. And, you know, thinking about the whole child, thinking about not only their academic su success, but how are they staying connected socially? You know, what are ways that, um, how are they feeling emotionally? And what are ways that they're exploring their passions through extracurricular opportunities? So I mentioned earlier how the school counselor uh, will be, you know, one of the most primary people that you will connect with is guardians and caregivers uh, for your students. And our school counselors at the high school level play um, a really critical role in all of these. These are just some of the ways that they they support um, your students at the high school. You know, they talk with them in small groups, one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Um, they talk about you know, providing them support with uh, scheduling, the scheduling process with career guidance, um, you know, 
thinking through uh, different opportunities, um, looking at their tra transcripts, um, helping them to figure out the process for college if that's what they choose or post-secondary school and looking at different career opportunities. So there are a lot of things that the counselors at the high school support um, your students with. And I would strongly advise that you, you know, form a relationship with the school counselor as a critical person in your child's life. So we will slowly and and I talked with your uh, I talked with your students today about course selection and sort of the timeline, like what happens from now through um, the end of the year and then until their time where they start in September um, as ninth graders at High School South. Um, so the first thing that happens is that uh, school counselors and student leaders met with the eighth grade students today at GMS, and we talked with them a little bit about the program of studies. Um, we shared with them some of the requirements and answered a number of questions in smaller groups. They were also able to meet with their uh, school counselor and start that connection with that individual as well today. Um, in addition to that, um, we are currently participating in our program of studies night at where we're talking about the different content areas and experiences that your child will have at the high school level. And then this is a really important date just to keep in mind. Um, you will be able to begin selecting uh, courses in Genesis February 6th. So putting in your requests for courses that you desire, um, your your child, you know, obviously in conversation with your child, looking at their eligibility, which is based on their first two marking period grades um, in eighth grade. And then um, in March, the uh, high school counselors will meet one-on-one -on -one with every student and help them to finalize their course selections. I want to share with you that, you know, as you make those course selections in Genesis, please snap a picture so you remember what you selected. <laughs> Sometimes um, students and families, they forget, you know, exactly what they selected. And once that window of time is closed, you're not able to go back in there and see it. Um, until the schedule is posted, which is late in August. So just snap a quick picture and then you have, you know, the courses that you selected in there as a reminder. And then in um, August, um, the high school has an orientation. So students will travel by bus and they will come into the high school. Um, they will take tours. They will have, you know, their schedules. Peer leaders will lead different uh, team building activities and really start to acclimate them to the high school um, to be able to, you know, really learn their environment and maximize um, their ability to feel comfortable uh, as they transition in September. And then in September, once school has started, um, the ninth the counselors also meet with the ninth graders and small groups, you know, to check in, to talk about um, how things are going thus far, um, to really talk to them about, you know, what it means to be a ninth grader, how they get connected, and really build those uh, social emotional skills as well. And there is a club fair. And that was one of the things I shared with um, your students today, that there are so many clubs, I couldn't possibly list all of them. And new clubs, you know, form student led clubs, um, you know, faculty led clubs, there, there are just numerous opportunities. So every possible passion you can think of has a club that represents it. So that is a way for students to make new friendships and really get connected um, as and be a part of the high school. Okay, so high school graduation requirements. So our students are required to earn 120 credits, um, and those credits um, have to be in the following areas. So for language arts, there's a rule requirement of 20 credits. Um, each, each language arts course is five credits, and therefore, you know, that means that they would take four years of language arts. Um, for math, it would be three years uh, with 15, 15 credits, and it must include Algebra 1 and Geometry. Those are state requirements um, and also super beneficial for students as they move forward as well. Um, and Science uh, also requires 15 credits or three different um, opportunities or classes, and it must include Biology and Chemistry, and then either um, Environmental or 
or physics. For social studies, we also have 15 credits as a requirement. Um, and this includes one year of wor world history and then two years of American studies. Financial literacy uh, is also a state requirement, and this is two and a half credits um, and typically takes place during one um, one year during the study hall, not every day, um, but for half of the year. And then health and PE, um, every year students have health and PE as sophomores, they will actually have driver's ed. That was a hot topic today in the sessions. Students were very curious about driver's ed uh, and wanted to know lots of information about uh, what that would be like and what the expectations were. So they're definitely looking forward to that although with a little bit of um, anxiety. And um, visual and performing arts later, our visual and performing arts uh, supervisor will talk about all the different opportunities we have in those electives um, you know, to share with you. The same with our 21st century life and career uh, readiness electives. So those are each five credits and um, there are so many different electives. You really, you know, you can find any, you can pretty much find something that you're passionate about, um, that your child is passionate about. So, um, you know, take a look at those. You can find detailed descriptions of, of them in the program of studies. Um, and Ms. Kapadia, the eighth grade uh, counselor, will be posting that in her Google Classroom so that students have an easy access to the program of studies so that's a place that you can also look for information. Um, she has been sharing some of the high school transition information with students in Google Classroom. And then for world languages, um, the requirement is uh, 10 credits, which is two years of a world language. Um, and we'll learn a little bit more about what that means later. Okay, so here's a typical ninth grade course. Students have language arts, world history, um, some mathematics, depending on the sequence and where they are, a science, uh, world language, PE and health, an elective, lunch, and then a study hall. All of our students are required to take study hall um, every year. So this is one of the areas where we have many questions. Uh, we talked a little bit about you know, course selection and how um, students are eligible based off of their first semester average in eighth grade, which means marking periods one and two. And so um, almost all of their courses in eighth grade are college prep, except for um, math if students are in honors and accelerated. So in a college prep class, IRLA, science, social studies, um, if they have an 80% or above, they're eligible to be in an honors course at the high school level. Um, if they are in honors um, and accelerated math, they, are, they would need a 70 or above to be in an honors course. There is a review process. If your child does not meet that eligibility, um, you can apply online um, on our district website for a review. And then the supervisor uh, would speak with their current eighth grade teacher. We would take a look at all of these different measures to determine whether or not um, you know, they, they would be eligible to have the honors course, even though they didn't meet eligibility. As I mentioned on our district website, we do have a copy of the uh, program of studies digitally, and you can find that by going on to departments, um, high school or counseling, high school counseling, and then you can find um, the program of studies, which is right here. And then that will lead to a variety of different links. Um, eventually this presentation, as well as the actual program of studies, which has every course that we offer, all the prerequisites for each of the courses, um, a description of the course and more information about every course. Oh, nope, didn't mean to do that. Here we go, sorry about that. As I mentioned earlier, you can begin re uh, course requests and elective requests in Genesis starting on February 6th, um, prior to your child meeting with their uh, 
high school counselor. The school counselors will then meet with every student individually and they will lock their um, schedule in Genesis. And then, as I mentioned also, that if you wanted to request a course el eligibility review, um, that you would have to do that by April 3rd. All right, and now Ms. Bean is going to talk a little bit about the language arts options. So hello, first of all, I'm Mrs. Uh, Bean, and before I even start, um, welcome to High School South. I have been a pirate since 1987, so um, I've seen lots of children come through the high school, and it's been a, a really wonderful place, a lot of growth and love and learning and, and pirate pride and spirit. Um, and so I just want to welcome your kids and say that you know, we're going to take care of them. We want everybody to learn and grow and be happy and healthy. And so welcome aboard the ship. Um, we're, we're glad to have you. Um, I'm the math supervisor, but our language arts supervisor, Ms. Krevling, uh, is very ill. She uh, couldn't be with us tonight, so she was a little sad about that. Um, but she gave me what to say about our courses. So I'm excited to tell you about language arts. Um, there are two options. For ninth graders, there's language arts one, that's our college prep level, and then there's language arts one honors. Um, both of them uh, follow the New Jersey standards for student learning, um, including reading, writing, speaking, listening, viewing. Um, they are taught as a multi-level class, um, just like your algebra one courses are or your math seven courses were in middle school. Um, they are taught together, but the honors students will be looking at some more complex texts. Um, they have a little bit of a different rubric for their writing, um, and they're, they're maybe studying some of the genres a little more in depth um, with a little more complexity. Um, so again, the best person to talk to about language arts is your child's IRLA teacher. Um, so if you're unsure which would be the best choice for them, uh, reach out to the IRLA teacher and ask them, you know, can my child... Is, are they ready for the more complex text? Are they ready for um, the, the more critiquing and writing? Um, and I'm sure that they, they will be able to help you because they work with your child every day. Um, and then don't forget that journalism is an elective. Um, so if they wanna write for the school newspaper, um, that's, that's an option. They don't have to do that in their ninth grade year. Um, they can join the newspaper in their 10th grade year, 11th grade year, or 12th grade year um, when they feel that it's best for them. Um, so it's it's an elective and it is certainly welcome for all. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Bean, for, for um, filling in. And now we will have uh, Dr. Warren talking about word language. Good evening, everybody. Hello, bonjour, hola, and ni hao. It's nice to meet you all. I feel the need to share because Mrs. Bean shared. I, Mrs. Bean, did you say 1987 you became a pirate? That is impressive. I will not tell you where I was in 1980. I was not born yet in 1987, but um, <laughs> I will you. share. Sorry. <laughs> I said I wasn't going to share, and then I shared. Um, I student taught at high school South when I was in college and it captured my heart and I thought I want to work in this district. I was so impressed by the community at South and loved it. So I taught in the program at South and am proud to work with the world language department at high school South. So students who have taken three years of a world language at Grover Middle School are eligible to enter French two if they took French, Chinese two if they took Chinese, German two if they studied German at Grover, and then if they studied Spanish at Grover, they have the choice of Spanish three, the college prep level, or Spanish three honors. Um, just like Mrs. Bean shared, if you are wondering if Spanish three honors or Spanish three is a better choice for your child, the, the person that knows your child's proficiency level best and can help walk you through that decision is your child's current Spanish teacher. Spanish three is targeted at the intermediate low proficiency level, that sentence length and mostly in the present tense. And Spanish three honors, the proficiency level is one level higher on the national actual scale, it's intermediate mid. So those students are working with multiple timeframes, past, present and future and paragraph length discourse. So that's really a great conversation to have with your child's current Spanish teacher. 
If your student only had two years or less of Spanish in middle school, or they have a need to review the beginning principles of Spanish, they may be eligible to schedule for Spanish too. And again, that's a great conversation to have with your child's current Spanish teacher, their counselor, or you can absolutely reach out to me. So there are three important things to share about the world language options. We reviewed what to do if your child is currently taking Spanish, French, German, or Chinese, and they want to continue that sequence. We just want to share that your child is eligible to start a new language at High School South. We offer Spanish 1 and French 1. So if you took German for three years and you loved it, but you're ready to try something new, Spanish 1 or French 1 is available. We also want to talk about students that want to study a language they already speak at home. So perhaps your child spent part of their young childhood in Germany, or you're from a home that speaks German, or a home that speaks Chinese, or you spent time in a Chinese-speaking community and your child has some proficiency in that language. They probably are not going to start at level one or level two because they have prior proficiency in the language. So for a student who has prior proficiency in the language, either because of their family or because of where they lived and studied at one point, they're able to take a test. And that test will be available later this spring. The announcement will go out via email, just like Mrs. Gould shared. It's so important to read those emails. Um, it will come home to the families and caregivers of all eighth grade students, and you will be eligible to sign up to take a placement test so that the student can be appropriate placed in the right level. That test is only for students who have prior proficiency in the language and are switching to a new language. And finally, for world language, we do have an option uh, to support students who their child study team or their counselors say would greatly benefit from a class with additional support. And that class is called Introduction to Spanish Communication and Culture. High School South is also proud to be the home of our English language learning program at the high school level. And so that's a great continuation from Grover Middle School. And so if your child is still learning English and growing in their English language proficiency, we have a full range of programs available for them. In place of their the traditional language arts class for ninth graders and in place of a world language class, an English language learner student is able to take ELL one through four, course A and B, which serves as a, um, a course in place of world language and language arts. And students are assigned to that course one through four based on their WIDA score, which is determined based on the access tests which students will be taking in the next month. Um, students are also able to take world history with ELL support, science one ELL or biology ELL. And during their study hall, as Mrs. School chaired, all students in high school South have study hall. And there is a specific study hall for students that are English language learners so that they have support available to them at that time. And that's it for the World Language and ELL department. If you have any questions, you can absolutely reach out to me at ashley.warren at wwprsd.org. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Rich Steck. I'm the District Supervisor of Science, and, and I absolutely love this time of year. We begin to talk about the exciting times that your children can look forward to as they continue their scientific journey. So that being said, as we move forward to think about what courses your children want to study next, um, we begin to talk about their freshman year options, their ninth grade options, rather, excuse me. And so biology or biology honors is how we kick off that high school experience. It will build on what they've learned in middle school, which is kind of like that graphic I have in the upper left-hand corner of the, of the slide, where it shows a spiraled experience as we begin to understand how the system of our planet and all the interrelationships of all the organisms and the biosphere and the, and the lithosphere and how these different levels of life support what we study in science. Uh, so when they begin to take that journey, they'll begin to connect to what they've already done in middle school. They've been able to construct explanations. They've been able to design experiments. They've been digging deep into content, but most importantly, but having a lot of fun and learning about themselves as they become young scientists. So as they move on from biology, it's really important that they that they're allowed to experience what they're most passionate about and that those subsequent years as they continue their high school experience or things I really enjoyed talking about. Uh, if there's ever an opportunity for them to explore 
Over the course of the summer, I would recommend science journaling, uh, take them to a park, take them to a local lake, uh, take them to the outdoors and just have them, you know, turn over some rocks and see what they see. Notice what they smell, what they feel, what they hear, because these are the senses that scientists rely on the most which leads me to the center graphic where you see the person with the microscope. And of course, the damselfly off to the right, which is one of my favorite animals in the insect world, because that eye structure just really just represents so much of the excitement we want to see in our kids' eyes as they explore science. Um, I'm always available and ready to talk about science and make sure that we make together the best decision for your children. So if you have any questions about the science experience, you can always email me at richard.stec, S-T-E-C, at W-A-P-R-S-D.org. But as they gear up for the science experience at the ninth grade level, uh, biology and biology honors, they are, it is multi-level course, but the bio honors kids expected to still meet that grade and experience the standards as they, as we expect them to as honor students. But as someone described to me earlier today, when we raise the, the tide, everybody floats. So the biology college prep kids will also be able to experience content at that higher level, but they will have a differentiated experience through assessment, through different labs and, and scaffolded support so they too can have a chance to succeed. So uh, it's a great experience for them and they'll continue that, that multi-level experience like they have in middle school. And if you have any further questions about science or would like to talk more about it with me personally, just don't ever hesitate to reach out. So thank you very much for your time. Welcome again and uh, exciting times ahead. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Cindy Assini. I'm the Supervisor of Social Studies and I'm excited to share a little bit about the offerings for freshmen for social studies. So typically freshmen are taking world history or world history honors and they, it is a multi-level course. So students in the same class um, will be learning about re Renaissance to the present. And if that sounds boring to you, I assure you that our social studies teachers are working hard to meet our goals in social studies. Our goals in social studies are for us to use that historical content across all areas of the world where all people are included so that your child understands the world today and that they can apply lessons from history to the present and plan for the future. So our goals in social studies are to have students practice those critical thinking skills, reading, writing skills, so that they can go out and vote in an informed manner and that they can take action to make the world a better place. So that's why I got into social studies and a lot of the other teachers did as well to make social studies come alive to students and make it a lot less boring than it was when we were in high school. The goal is for students to really be engaged and thinking critically on a regular basis in social studies class. So we work on those reading, writing and critical thinking skills regularly. And the world history honor students are going to be doing that at a more independent pace they're going to have less scaffolds and structures. They'll be reading more complex texts. So everyone reads primary sources in social studies. However, the primary sources read by a student in CP are going to be typically shorter, typically edited somewhat so that they are more readable, more easily readable. So I've been in a number of multi-level world history classes this year and it is really interesting to see teachers giving students choices so that they can engage in content at the level that they feel most appropriate for them and that students can challenge themselves when it's appropriate. So I'm really excited that your child will have the opportunity to be in this multi-level environment so that regardless of whether they're taking CP or honors, they can really challenge themselves as much as possible and be practicing those communication skills. So even if your child is more on the math and science side in terms of their interest, the social studies practice in that reading, writing, and analysis can really help them become the effective communicators that they need to be across any career that they might choose. So if you have questions about social studies, I encourage you to contact me at cindy.assini at wwprsd.org. I look forward to helping support your student um, as they come to the high school. And I do assure you, even though I'm relatively new to WWP, that it is just as welcoming as everyone who has been there for 30 years has said. I am really excited for your child to become a pirate in the next uh, six months or so and look forward to supporting them in that journey.
Okay, so I'm back. I am Andrea Bean and I am the math supervisor and I'm here to talk about our math options. So for our ninth grade students, the choices are algebra one, algebra two, algebra two honors and geometry honors and accelerated. So if your child is currently in the algebra two honors and accelerated class, um, they the most appropriate class for them would be the next in the sequence honors and accelerated. Um, our Algebra 2 and Algebra 2 honors are taught together as a multi-level class, just like Algebra 1 and Algebra 1 honors. Um, and so again, they would um, be next in the sequence after Algebra 1. And if your child's in Math 8, their next course would be Algebra 1. Um, when making the choices, just keep in mind that um, we want children to be um, challenged, but not... Um, over not not challenged to the point of frustration but challenged to have what we call productive struggle um, because that's when they really learn how to learn right um so i just want to say that um again talk to the math teacher if you have a question about what is appropriate for your child um, because they work with them as a mathematician every day um now if you have questions about the sequence in the future and the 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 course contents, those would be questions for me, um, Andrew Bean. But if they're very specific to your child and what they should take based on how they're doing in class, um, ask your um, child's teacher. So if we go to the next slide, you'll see our math sequence. Um, and this is on the district website. Um, so it'll give you a hint uh, of what's to come because parents like to know what the order is. So in general, we do an algebra one, an algebra two, a geometry, a pre-calc, and some level of either calculus or statistics. Um, uh, and again, if you have questions about the sequence as they're planning their journey, um, it's right here for you in this slide deck. It's on the district website. And um, of course, I can always help you make that plan through. While I have you here, though, I would like to talk about what's not on the slide, and that is our summer courses. Um, so we're very fortunate in math that we can offer WWP courses during the summer for two and a half credits. So you heard Mrs. Gould say that a full year course is five credits. Um, and we will get to maybe why we don't want to learn full year courses in a shortened summer. Um, so an option is to maybe learn a half a year's worth of course in a summer um, in tents. They are in person for four weeks um, and they are awesome. So they're for students that are interested in really showing that they have a passion for math, right? Um, they're run through community education. The link is open now. Um, the two that are recommended for our rising ninth graders, our current eighth graders, our introduction to data science. Um, any eighth grade student can sign up to take that this summer. Um, you know, data science is all the buzz. There's data everywhere. Um, Stanford is pushing for data science instead of calculus as a senior year course. Um, so it's, it's a big topic in math education right now. So this is a way that our students can get an introduction to it and see if that's a, a different branch of mathematics they might like. And if your child's in the H and A program and has completed Algebra two, they could take an introduction to discrete math. Um, they could take either course. And introduction to discrete math really opens our minds to mathematics that we don't normally get to study in um, in the traditional course load that New Jersey kind of prescribes for us. Um, and so there's some really great topics there, and it's very exciting. Um, so if you want to do something in the summer to show a little bit of passion. Um, I recommend these half year courses. They go on your child's trans transcript as a WWP course, um, and they're great, counts towards their GPA. Um, and if you want more information about those, please reach out to me or check out the community ed website where there's a ton of information. Thanks. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jeff Santoro. I am the supervisor of Fine and Performing Arts. Um, that is one title, but I actually represent four different content areas, and they're all represented right here on this slide. Um, you, your 
students, your children are going to be in great hands at South with our fine and performing arts faculty. Um, I'm super proud to work with them. We have a great program. So let me tell you a little bit about it. First of all, all of the classes you see, all the courses you see on this slide are um, available to any ninth grader coming to South next year. But what I'm going to talk about is the typical uh, transitions you see based on what students are interested in and what they've taken at Grover Middle School, but they could take any of these when they come up to the high school next year. So we'll start with art. Art Foundation is the class that I would say most of our ninth graders take if they're interested in taking an art class in their uh, ninth grade year. That class is most similar to what if they took um, art elective in seventh or art elective in eighth grade. Art Foundation is sort of the next sequence that it'll feel very much like those elective classes that they took at Grover. Um, if they just took the art cycle like everyone else does and they're interested in what they did in that class, Art Foundation is also a great option for that kind of a student as well. Computer Art and Design 1 is also an art class, but instead of using paint or pencils or oil pastels, you use the computer to create the artwork. Um, it's a fantastic option for any student, but especially a student who might be a little bit intimidated by art, doesn't feel that they are very artistic, but wants to give it a uh, try at the high school. Um, a lot of students find success in that class and then go on to either the second level of that course or other art classes. So that kind of are the two options we have for art at ninth grade. Uh, we have a new course this year for the very first time and a new department. We have a dance program now. Um, you might have heard or you might have seen if you've been in the high school. We have a brand new beautiful dance studio right by the main entrance. Um, we have a fantastic dance teacher and dance one is a class open to ninth graders. It's really for anyone who is interested in dance, whether they do or don't have dance experience. So if you have a child at home that is interested in dance, but never took a dance class, dance one is great for them. If you have a student at home who's a very accomplished dancer, um, there, that dance one is also a great option for them too, because we often use the students in the class who have a lot of experience as, um, as examples and uh, students who can help others get through the course curriculum. So dance one is a great option for any kid interested in dance. On the music side of things, um, the first three courses you see listed here, concert band, chorale, and string ensemble are the band, the chorus, and the orchestra that if your students do those right, those things right now in Grover, if they're in the band, orchestra, or choir, and they want to continue, those are the courses they would take. So concert band would be any kid who's currently taking band, chorale, any student who's currently taking chorus, and string ensemble, any student who's currently in the Grover orchestra. If they want to stay in their ensemble that, they, that they've been doing since fourth or fifth grade, those are the courses to take next year in ninth grade. Music theory and music technology are also open to ninth graders, and they just offer a different entryway into the music program that's not based on the three ensembles that we've been, um, that you've probably seen your, your students in over the past several years. Um, there are also great options for all kids who love music, want to try something with music, but maybe aren't interested in band, orchestra, or choir. And last, uh, our Oh, I have visual art on here twice. That's my mistake. The last one I can just tell you about, it's really easy. Um, theater arts is what should have been at the bottom here. We have a course called Theater Arts One, and that is a course that's open to all ninth graders, but would be especially great for any student who took either performing arts in seventh or eighth grade, or was in the play or the musical at Grover, or loves to be in shows, wants to be on stage. It's also a great course for kids who want to just learn how to be a, pu a better public speaker, or just have a little bit more confidence standing up in a room full of people. So it's open to all grade levels. It's a really great course, I think, for ninth graders. It can really help with that transition into high school because it teaches some of the same skills that you need to um, you know, feel comfortable in front of your peers. So. Theater arts is our fourth area here, and I'll fix that slide for tomorrow night's presentation. But again, all of these are open for all students, and um, I really hope to see all of the students who are currently in our arts programs continue at the high school. And I also hope we see a lot more kids try it and see if they want to um, do it for more than just one year. And as everyone else said, you can always reach out to me for any questions. Uh, my email address can be found on the district website, and I look forward to meeting a lot of you and talking through what we have at the high school. Thanks. Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, thank you for coming tonight. Um, one of the things I always start off with, and most people don't realize it, uh, I've been a pirate since 1978. 
so I've been in West Windsor Plainsboro for a very long time, um, and I have the best job in the district because I get to oversee a lot of different departments from K-12 across the district. Uh, tonight we're talking about some of the 21st century life and careers elective uh, options. Um, as you can see here, uh, we'll take a moment. Um, there is a QR code there, so if you want to take a screenshot or grab your camera and, and scan it, uh, that'll take you to a website that has uh, more information and video um, introductions to all the different classes that are in here. So you can do a little more exploration about the individual classes. Um, this is not just the ninth grade in there as well. It also gives you options for 10, 11, and 12. So um, go ahead and uh, screenshot that as I continue talking. Um, but we have the computer science department. Um, the computer science department is a huge department in the district. We have right now about 800 kids enrolled in computer science. Um, where we you know, go through Java, uh, students in ninth grade um, take the introduction class in 10th grade, many of them go on and take the AP Comp Sci courses. Um, there's actually two courses for 10th graders, which is AP Comp Sci A and AP Comp Sci Principles um, as 10th graders. Um, digital communication, digital media, our engineering department, which just got a brand new facility, um, state-of-the-art facility in the addition. Um, where we've designed our curriculum um, with uh, input from Wooster, Stevens Institute, and uh, Cornell University in terms of our, our engineering courses. Um, the family computer science, the family consumer science classes, again, that just got a brand new facility. That looks a lot like what you'd see um, in the Master Chef kitchen. So it's uh, rows of uh, students being able to work independently and in the front are live camera feeds of the demonstration of everything is commercial uh, equipment in there so it, it's quite the sight to see it's a beautiful place to go. Uh, we also have on the right side our business department which has accounting and marketing. Um, and finally we have a media department with TV production broadcast writing and journalism. One of the items that's not on here, which uh, I've got a lot of questions about, um, is our Emerging Financial Markets course. It's in the business department, but it teaches about finance and it goes into cryptocurrency. Um, to get into that course, um, it is a prerequisite to take computer programming and mobile game design because it is a technical course where students will have the, you know, have the background knowledge of computer science because cryptocurrency, we go into the different uh, data sets and encryption um, security that goes into making uh, cryptocurrency. So um, that would be a 10th grade course if they took computer programming, mobile game design as freshmen. Um, but again, that's uh, emerging financial markets. Um, so again, uh, welcome. Um, I look forward to having all of your children here as pirates. And uh, to take a picture of that screenshot, and uh, if you reach out to me, uh, my information is on the website or on the uh, district website, and I'm sure you can find me. Thank you so much for joining us. So I have the opportunity to talk about AVID. Um, AVID is an elective which stands for Advancement via Individual Determination. Um, and AVID is a college readiness uh, program designed to help our students develop uh, skills in college preparedness, uh, writing strategies. Um, they have opportunities to, village, uh, to visit college campuses, uh, really work on team building and community activities and um, strategies for academic su success. And they're able to be partnered with a teacher mentor who uh, works with them throughout the four years in high school, as well as a counselor, uh, and really focuses on these skills in order to help support students and their ability to attend college. And so AVID does have criteria. Um, AVID typically, AVID students uh, typically have a desire and a willingness, you know, to take on rigorous preparation for college. Uh, there's students that are typically B or C students who really desire to um, be focused and are passionate about exploring opportunities for their future. 
Um, they have to have good attendance, uh, you know, be coming to school. Uh, attendance in high school is really important. I mean, it's important all of the time, but in high school especially because there are attendance requirements in order to earn credits for classes. Um, so AVID students have to have a good attendance record, and then they would need to fill one of the following criteria. Um, they need to be part of a, a group that is typically underrepresented in college either or a first generation college student. Um, they could possibly, you don't have to meet all of these criteria. So any, any of them, um, they could qualify for free or reduced lunch or come from low income backgrounds. Um, or if there are other special circumstances or situations that might hinder their ability to seek college assistance um, on their own. And so these, you know, this is a really great opportunity to have a more supportive structure and to help prepare students for their future. As I mentioned, um, they work very directly with a counselor and um, a teacher who mentors them and stays with them for all of the years that they have at the high school. There's a, an AVID night coming up, so stay tuned for that and pay attention to the district email if you are interested. Uh, there is an AVID night coming up that will give a lot more detailed information uh, if you are interested. Good evening. My name is Kate Dobinson. Um, I'm the athletic director, and I'm going to be speaking to you tonight on behalf of Jeff Riley, the health and PE supervisor. Um, Health and Fee Phys Ed is a, is a great time to, um, to give our students an opportunity to, um, to decompress during the day, to try different things, to be active, to burn off some energy um, and stress that they may start to develop over the course of a day. Um, each year, it is state required that all of our students take three quarters of physical education and one quarter of health. And then in their 10th grade year, they will take a quarter of driver's education. Um, the physical education program dedicates its efforts to providing an environment in which students can participate in meaningful, enjoyable activities. Um, and we really focus on developing skills that they are able to utilize for their lifetime. It, it really is a lifetime fitness approach. Um, so they'll be utilizing the weight room. They'll be involved in team sports, um, individual sports, such as badminton, archery, and dance. Um, and it really focuses on that lifetime fitness, developing those fitness skills um, to maintain a healthy lifestyle after graduating. Our health curriculum, focuses on positive and responsible decision-making through a variety of topics that span from human relationships to substance abuse to mental health to be able to prepare our students for the next phase of life. Um, our health and PE department is a they have so much energy and um, the folks over at High School South, they have such a, a caring um process that they go to to get to develop relationships with each and every one of your students. Um, and what's really nice with the health curriculum is the teacher that has them for PE will be also teaching them health. So we move away from the cycle courses um, and they're able to kind of dive into um, a more uh, in-depth approach to health and wellness as a whole. If we could go to the next slide. I'm also going to talk about athletics. Um, West Windsor Plainsboro is a member of the Colonial Valley Conference, and we are also a member of the Mercer County Tournament Association, or MCTA. Um, we are also proud member, a uh, proud member school of the New Jersey uh, State High School uh, Interscholastic Athletic Association, um, and that's our governing body as we go through our athletic programs. Um, as Ms. Sankata said at the beginning of the program, after school becomes a, high school South becomes a hub of activity, and there's many different opportunities for your child to become involved. Um, the athletic program, we offer a variety of athletic um, programs. Our coaches are top notch. Uh, they really care about each and every one of your, your students um, and their athletes, um, and they 
they want to focus on developing skills that students can use um, that are not necessarily classroom based skills. Um, so some of the reasons of why we encourage participation in athletics is uh, studies have shown that students who participate in athletics sometimes see greater success within the classroom. Um, they develop healthy habits and set a foundation for an active lifestyle. Um, our students really develop uh, important skills such as time management, of teamwork, of leadership. Um, and then also they develop the three Ps. They learn patience, they learn practice, and they learn perseverance. Um, and they're able to take a lot of these different skills, both that they get from in the classroom out to the athletic fields, but also the skills that they get and they earn and they learn on the athletic fields can really transfer over into the classroom environment as well. Um, as Ms. Sincata and Ms. Gould has mentioned multiple times, all of our registration information from athletics comes through emails. And it's really important that um, parents are, are paying attention to those emails. So, and guardians are paying attention to those emails so that they're not missing those crucial dates for registration. Um, if we could uh, progress to the next slide. So we, as I said, we have a variety of athletic options. Um, our fall sports, they start in mid-August. Um, that is not a typo. It does start in mid-August. We also do uh, summer workouts throughout the course of summer. Um, but if you, or if your child is, is um, your student is planning on participating in a fall sport, it's important to recognize that mid-August date. And then it does go to early November. Our winter sports begin in late November and they go into late February. And then our spring sports wraps up the school year and they begin in early March and let end in late May. Um, commitment is something that we really wanna foster within the athletic program um, because they are a team sport and everybody needs to really kind of work together and come together and make sacrifices and be committed to the team. Um, with that in mind, our practices and games do take place during winter and spring recess, as well as on Saturdays and any other scheduled day off from school outside of a religious holiday. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as you're, you know, thinking about becoming involved within the athletic program. Should you have any questions specific to athletics, you know, feel free to reach out to myself or Jeff Riley, our assistant athletic director. Um, I, you know, we've been talking about so many of us have been pirates. Um, I am also a pirate. I, uh, I graduated in uh, 2000. Um, I was involved in our athletic program as a student, and it's it's great to give back. and And the best part of my day is when I see those students out, um, you know, competing on the fields and at practice because we really get to see our students achieve in many different ways. So thank you very much. I mentioned um, earlier that there are so many different extracurricular opportunities. Here are just a few of our enrichment programs that are available for students to become a part of. In addition to these, um, there is a club fair that is held in the fall. And um, as I mentioned, there are like over 50 different clubs that students can join, especially um, if they're passionate about an area, they are very likely to be able to find a club that they can, um, that will meet their need and will foster their passion. And now uh, Ms. Bean is gonna talk a little bit about option two. Yes, hi, so um, I get the privilege of talking about option two because I think most um, people in our district associate it with math, although really um, option two is a pretty big umbrella and it came from the state of New Jersey. Um, to serve as an alternate uh, way to achieve high school credit rather than the traditional high school courses um, that we offer. Um, so it was meant for students who are having difficulty meeting graduation requirements or for students who are looking for something that the high school doesn't offer, like say they're looking for a guitar course or a marine biology course um, or something that we don't offer. This is a way that they could get credit for that outside study. Um, unfortunately, uh, some people in our district have um, used it to accelerate through some of the courses that we offer. Um, so I just want to mention that that we don't recommend 
um, that you take option two to skip a course that we offer. Um, we feel that we offer 10 months worth of curriculum in 10 months and that trying to squeeze it into six weeks um, is really a, an unnecessary burden for your child and they miss out on the rich experience of learning something in depth, struggling with it and making those connections. Um, so, so I know um, when I talk to parents, I have lots of questions about option two because they hear about it, but they're not sure what it is. So again, it is it is an option to take a course outside of um, out of our school, and most people do it in the summer to get um, high school credit. But it's an option. Um, it's not anything that you have to do, and it certainly is not um, necessarily something that you that we recommend you do for skipping a course. But say you want to pursue option two for your child. Um, maybe they do want to take that geology course that we don't offer or something interesting. We do have a process and that process is on our next screen. Um, and that is um, outlined here. So you can see all of it. There's an online form and everything. You will find all of the forms and the information and the test dates um, on our website program of studies. Um, it's under counseling, high school counseling, and then there's actually an option two section there. So you will see all of this um, outlined there if that is something you want to pursue. Um, I will caution you if you look at our next slide. Um, students, if they do take a course to skip one of ours, they have to meet our 10-month proficiency level and they take um, they take an exam, so, so they have to take an exam in August to show proficiency at the 10 month level. So even though they took a six or an eight week course, they have to show proficiency the same as a child who is in there the same uh, for the whole year. So I don't expect you to be able to read these, these next two slides, but they are just little screenshots of the assessment results. So you can know what you're getting into. If you do use it to skip a course, that information is also on our website under the option two tab. Um, so you will be able to find that there. Um, and again, there's two slides of that, so you can see that. Um, and I'm just going to push one more time. If you really want your child to take a course in the summer, do it to show their passion. Don't do it to accelerate. Don't do it to skip. I think that 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 sends a, an unnecessary message um, to your child that that this learning can be rushed. Um, and I also feel that sometimes colleges look at that as, as maybe you're trying to build your transcript in a certain way, and you're not really focusing on learning. Um, so if you do want to do learning over the summer, use option two to explore a course we don't take or take one of our summer math courses and really explore passion. Um, that that's my advice about option two. Again, if you have questions about a specific subject area option two, reach out to the supervisor. And we'll be happy to um, help you figure out what is best for your child in that respect. So thanks. And I just wanted to clarify uh, two additional things about option two, Ms. Bean. Um, one was that in the in the structure and the process that we had May 1st as a deadline, it's actually March 31st. So that was a typo. I will go back and adjust that, but I just wanted parents to be aware that the forms, the request forms are due by March 31st. And the other thing I wanted to just mention about option two is that, um, you know, there's, I think there's a misconception that students are not going to be able to get into a, you know, a great college or university if they don't take an option two. And that is exactly, you know, a misconception. It That is not true. It is not necessary, you know, for your child to take an option two as a way to, um, you know, get into to a really rigorous uh, university or college. They can do it just by taking the courses that we have at the high school level, um, which are very rigorous and do show, um, can show a story about their passions. You know, it really is meant to be um, for students who have an interest uh, around a course that we do not have.
So before we open up to question and answer, uh, these are just some tips, you know, some things to think about. Um, I think, you know, the counselors will talk with your students about, you know, making sure that they have a balanced course load, that they really are, yes, challenging themselves, but not overloading because they want to have time to be able to explore their passions and to get involved at the high school to participate in extracurriculars, you know, and in order to do that, if they have a course load that is overloaded, it makes it more challenging for, you know, them to be able to focus and to be able to have enough time to balance both their work, their academic work and their extracurriculars. So making sure to challenge with without overloading, um, also making sure that they take care of themselves. Um, you know, especially, I, I would say, especially adolescents uh, do not have great sleep habits. Um, many of them sleep with their devices in their rooms, and those are going off at all times um, in the night. And so, you know, I would um, really try to think about how you can foster some of those habits with them and have conversations around making sure that they're exercising, having a great diet, and really sleep is, is critical to their learning. It really helps their uh, cognitive ability when they're able to have that rest. Um, they will learn, you know, how to manage their time. Um, there are different strategies that will work with diff for different students. As I mentioned, when the counselors meet with the students in small groups, they'll talk about time management strategies. They will also talk about um, ways for students to be able to manage uh, their course load, to get organized and, and really all of those skills. Um, and then you can see some of the others, you know, thinking about um, how to get connected and to make sure that they have that supportive network. And I would say that their school counselor, as well as their teachers and coaches um, and, and uh, you know, advisors for different clubs, those are people to go to if they have a question or a concern or something that they want to talk through. So thank you so much. And now I'm going to open it up to uh, Ms. Walsh, who's our lead counselor, and she will be joined by the uh, the other school counselors at High School South, who will talk a little bit about some of the frequently asked questions that parents and students have when making the tra transition to high school. Good evening, everybody. It's so uh, great to have so many people here with us this evening to learn about High School South. Uh, we have our whole group of very proud counselors who met your um, children today over at Grover um, wearing our South gear and we continue into the evening to wear our Pirate South gear because we're so proud of it. Um, so we've come up, we've done this program a number of times. We've talked to parents, we've talked to students, and we sort of came up with a um, list of frequently asked questions that we're going to try to um, take some, many of the supervisors answered some of these questions. We're just going to kind of reiterate a few things. And then, um, Barb, if you want to turn the chat on. Yes, I have um, done that. Yeah, I, you don't need to go crazy in the chat quite yet, but in case we missed a frequently asked question at the end or something, we'll be happy to answer a couple uh, general questions. If you have specific questions about your child, you should certainly address them to the eighth grade counselor, um, Ms. Kapadia. So um, anyway, so thanks for listening to that. And here we go. I will actually take the first question. So one of the frequently asked questions is, should students take all courses they are eligible to take? So if you recall early in the program, um, we talked about uh, eligibility. Um, what course, whether you can take an honors course or a college prep course or an AP level course. Uh, there are no AP level courses, by the way, for ninth graders, so we don't have to go there. But your children will have um, choices of college prep versus honors in um, things like history, science, math, language arts, and so forth. Um, and eligibility is based on their mid-year grades. So the grades that they get next week on their mid-year will determine their eligibility. Um, some students um, will be eligible for honors in everything because they have an a or a B um, in their college prep level classes at Grover, or they're in an honors class at Grover and they're getting a C. But that doesn't mean that it's a great idea. We like to think of high school as a journey of growth and you are never stuck in a track. So if you don't choose, for example, honors history in ninth grade, um, then you go and you take history and you all of a sudden the teacher just, you know, 
ignites your interest in history and you decide you like it, you got an A, you you know, became passionate about history, um, you can take honors history in 10th grade. Um, the same with all, you know, the language arts and stuff. And then the, the sciences are very different. You take biology one year and what you need for biology honors or their interest in biology honors might be different than whether you want when you're, it's time to take chemistry. So um, they sh usually should not take everything they're eligible for. It is better to have a journey of growth than to dive in head first, take every single honors class and then uh, have to dial back um, in 10th grade. Um, so the demands in high school are definitely, um, the academic demands are definitely, um, more than they are at the middle school. There's a lot of things that they're doing when they transition into high school with regards to there's no teams and, you know, they need to be more independent learners. Uh, the honors classes, um, require a lot of, um, you know, independent work and so forth. Um, so they should be taking the classes they're eligible for if they're passionate about those particular classes. Um, if they really love math, then they can take honors math, but maybe they uh, kind of try out college prep history or something like that. Balance, we've been talking about it all night and we'll just keep talking about it. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, the next question um, is going to be answered by Miss Erica, one of our counselors. Hi, good evening. Thank you all for coming. It's great to see so many of you on here. Um, I definitely have to say it was really nice to meet your students this morning in person um, to get to know each of our section. So my question definitely goes off of exactly what Mrs. Walsh was saying. And part of what I was going to do was quote her and say that, um, you know, it is a journey of growth and that's what your transcript or the student's transcript really is. So the question is, if a student does not take an honors level course their freshman year, can they take an honors level course in the following years? And the answer is, of course, yes. Um, ultimately, if a student is taking CP, which is college prep, um, if the student is eligible, then the student can take um, honors the following year. Eligibility is marked very specifically in the program of studies under each course. So, for example, you know, if a student has an 80% a semester course, then they would be eligible um, in a CV class to move to an honors. But that is something that you can read in the program of studies because each course is different in terms of eligibility, as Mrs. Walsh had said. Um, it's important to understand those challenges, right, from going from a CP to an honors, um, especially if you're upping a level in world language or math. Um, those courses, those are a big jump, and sometimes it's just important to realize where, how different is going to be. Um, because your CP courses, they are extremely rigorous. Um, but you just need to know that an honors course is a little bit of a different level. It has um, different expectations. It's a way more independent um, and it moves at a faster pace. So those are just some things to be aware of, but CP is extremely rigorous um, and it's a great curriculum either way. Um, it, like Mrs. Walsh said, I just wanted to say that it has to do with your passion. If you're interested in that, then try an honors course. Um, and if a student had a rocky marking period and is doing better and it's affecting the semester grade, we do have an eligibility review process um, and that would be submitted by April 1st. The best thing to know, and I think Mrs. Walsh might have said that said this, is that you are never stuck in one track and it is a journey and you can you can move, you can try new things when it comes to a subject area that you're passionate about. You could take one honors, you could take two. It's really a decision for you and to know like what is going to be expected from there. And the program studies really helps to answer all the eligibility questions. So yeah, so thank you. Um, and obviously you can reach out to the eighth grade counselor and then we look forward to meeting with all of your kids um, when we schedule in March. Thanks, Megan. I realized I got a little enthusiastic and uh, partially answered part of your question too. Um, That's all right. <laughs> as a result of question one and two, there's a question in there about dropping honors to CP in the mid-year. Um, we do have... Um, deadlines around schedule changes and uh, except in rare situations, um, usually you can only make level changes throughout the month of September. 
So that's why it's great to um, try to make some thoughtful decisions. And in that process, you may even want to consult with the eighth grade teachers um, to see what their recommendation might be for the honors um, for the honors level. So hopefully that answered that question. Um, next up, Ms. Ficini. Hi, everyone. Good evening. I'm Antonella Ficini. I'm happy to be here with all of you tonight. So the question I'm going to help answer is, is study hall mandatory for all students? And the answer to that is that yes, it is mandatory. Um, it is valuable time though built into the school day for students to do the following things during that time. So a student can work on assignments alone or with peers who share the same study hall period. A student can prepare for assessments. They can utilize our new media center and the resources that we have there. A student can um, attend instrumental music lessons or choir lessons during that time. And for those students later on in AP science courses, that is when they will have their schedule lab built into their rotation. A student can meet with teachers who share a common prep time um, to catch up on work if they missed class um, for an absence. And a student can attend peer group with their assigned peer leaders in ninth grade. Um, and finally, um, it's time to built in to take a needed rest and to take a breather um, so they can recharge and regroup for the remaining part of their day. The only exception, um, so I'm sorry, financial literacy is the only class um, that is the exception. And that is something that um, can happen in 10th, 11th, or 12th grade. Um, and that is um, embedded at that point in a student study hall on a rotation um, from September through June. Ninth graders are not quite eligible yet for this. However, it will be an option for them to explore in 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. Um, next up is Ms. Smith who will take you on to our next frequently asked question. Good evening, everybody. It's so nice to have seen the, the students today at Grover. It was very enthusiastic and I look forward to having them next year. I'm going to address some of the questions that are in the chat when I talk about are all electives available to freshman students? Some of this, um, the questions came up or what is the significance of the electives and is it important for them for the college process and I can tell you that electives are the way that students find out more about courses more about career paths more about subjects more about themselves more about how to work in teams so the electives are very important they are uh, required by the state of New Jersey and the school district in those two areas that we talked about before, the visual and performing arts and the 21st century career in business. So any questions at all about what is emerging financial markets, that's not a course that's open to ninth graders because it has a prerequisite, but you certainly should go to the program of studies and just read about the courses. There's just a little couple of sentences of each one. And it, as we've been saying, it will give you the information about what you must take before you get there. And students can progress through their high school years and stay in their elective of choice in, this, in the area. For instance, if they're an art student, they can take art all four years. They can take music all four years. They can mix and match, but they must take one of the other areas. And there are ways to do that as we get into the higher levels of high school when they have a couple of more options. We can always discuss that moving forward, but I think it's really important to know that there is um, a time for them to really look at these electives between now and March 6th, March 7th, March 8th, when you should be putting them into Genesis and pick one of the, the, their first choice and then two others. And the reason isn't because it runs out of space as often as there may be a conflict. Let's say the uh, elective that they really want to take only 
is available. Let's say they want dance and there's not eight periods of dance and it might conflict with, you know, one of their other classes that they have to keep. So I think it's really doing them a good service to help them begin now to review the program of studies. The one that we gave them today is really pertinent and they hopefully they came home with it and showed it to you. It looks like this and it's really pertinent for this time in their lives coming into high school. So there are only a few electives on the pages, but the first couple of pages really do a good job of explaining things and you'll get a better overview. But when they move on to 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade, they have to, you know, fill up those uh, academic periods and the some of the electives are really hard academic classes so when you think of elective don't think of it as only fluff think of it as a subject where maybe they have a passion for something and they want to really demonstrate that keep in mind too when i say this uh specifically to our incoming high school students they are going to have a very different transition in high school from what they had in middle school with teamwork and things like that and being much more independent. So if they're taking a lot of their core content coursework that's very intense, that elective period could be a chance for them to engage in something that's not as quite as stressful to them, something that they enjoy, such as the music or the art or the or the engineering courses. So keep that in mind. And as they move on, there will definitely be more options. And you won't have to wait for me to email you back about what the elective requirements are and all of that. Everything is in the program of study. So definitely become familiar with that because you have that right at your fingertips, especially with technology today. And we use that also. So everything that we do as counselors, as teachers is guided by whatever's in that program of study. So it's very, very familiar to all of you. So I look forward to working with your students and I hope that they come to us with those three choices for their electives. Thank you, everyone. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to take the next question. My name is Christine Javik, and I'm another counselor here at South. Uh, my question is, can students change their schedule at any time? Uh, and the short answer to that is no. Um, but I want to just go over a couple of aspects of scheduling and making changes. So the first thing is to let you know that we will be returning. The South counseling team will be returning to Grover on March 9th and 10th. Um, we will be returning this time, though, via Zoom. We will be meeting with students to talk about uh, their scheduling, what classes they're interested in taking for their ninth grade year. Um, you can go into Genesis ahead of that meeting and put in requests. Uh, so you can go through with your student, look through the program of studies, use the scheduling worksheet that we gave to them today in our meeting with them, the one that uh, Ms. Smith also just showed you, to pick out classes that they want to take. Uh, and you can put them into Genesis under requests. However, putting it under request does not finalize a schedule. That schedule finalization will happen when we meet with the student. So it, it'll be great to have that in there, though. Uh, good talking points for us with the student. If they have questions about some of the classes they're selecting, that's an opportunity for us to meet with them and go through some of that information. So feel free to put those requests in, but we will then finalize the actual scheduling process when we meet uh, with the eighth graders for their ninth grade scheduling. Um, if your student misses that day, if they're absent from school, they will work uh, with their eighth grade counselor to schedule after that time. Uh, additionally, if after we have that meeting, you and your student decide you want to make a change in the request that they've made, you will do that through their eighth grade counselor. So they can go to Ms. Kapadia and they can uh, make requests to make a change to something that they might have scheduled with us when we met. Uh, all schedule requests, however, are going to be finalized by March 25th. So we meet with them at the beginning of March. You'll have a couple of weeks to maybe think about it if you want to make any changes. Uh, again, it will go through Ms. Kapadia for any schedule changes by March 25th. Um, then as you go through the end of the year and the summer, 
Maybe students, you know, think about something that they've done over the summer that they have a new interest in, uh, a new elective choice maybe they're thinking about. There is an opportunity at the beginning of August, there's a two-week window, uh, where students could uh, request to make a change to some of the courses that they have selected. Uh, there is going to be a Google Doc that will be emailed to parents and students uh, at the end of July with regards to this window at the beginning of August. Um, the only thing with this is uh, we ask that you understand these are based on availability. So you can put in a request for a schedule change. Uh, and if there's availability in the class and we're able to make that change, uh, then we can do so. Um, but it is based on course availability. Um, so you can put in the request uh, and we will be able to make the change if there's uh, course availability. Uh, additionally, once the school year starts, students can change their level of courses. So for example, if a student decided when we were scheduling that they wanted to take an honors level course, and then ninth grade starts, we start in September, they start the first two cycles, which is the first two ABCD days of classes, and they realize this is a little bit too much for me. You know, maybe I've bitten off more than I can chew. Maybe I'm just not as interested in this subject and I don't know if I can handle this level. Uh, and they would like to try to drop down to the college prep level from the honors level. Um, during the month of September, they can go to their classes, try it out. And then at the end of September, an opportunity to request a level change. Uh, and that change definitely comes along with a conversation, uh, definitely a good conversation to have with their teacher, with their counselor. Uh, and then we can put in a request for a level change. Um, and that can also go if they're in a college prep class and they decide that they want to be challenged even more, they can also put in a request to change to an honors level. Um, but again, there's lots of conversation that goes along with that. We don't take um, those changes lightly. We really want it to be something that is thought out and thought through. Uh, so we will make that a conversation with your student if that comes about um, at the end of September. By the time we get to September 30th, however, everything needs to be finalized. Once we pass that window for uh, level change requests, that's when a student schedule will be finalized um, and no changes after that. I will also like to point out that during that level change period, once the school year has started, that is only to change levels within the same course. Uh, that won't be an opportunity to change courses. Um, so changing electives, that does not happen during that level change time. Any elective changes would need to be during that August window um, to make schedule change requests. Once we start the school year, it would be level changes only. So while there's some opportunities throughout the year to make changes at the beginning of the school year or the summer, um, generally speaking, it's not any time that students can make changes to their schedule. And again, any questions, definitely you know, reach out to the eighth grade counselor and then when we meet with the eighth graders to schedule in March, we can answer more questions for them then too. Thank you again for joining us. Hi everyone, good evening. My name is Brooke Parrott. I'm one of the counselors as well. Thank you, Ms. Javik, for an excellent job there. It was a pleasure to meet all of your students today at Grover. They had such thoughtful, wonderful questions and it will be really exciting to have them in our building in a really short time. Um, I have a big question for tonight and we've already touched upon this a bunch of different times throughout this pr um, presentation, but my question is, do students need to take an option two course? And I think you've heard us pretty emphatically say, no, 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 they don't. Option two is just that, optional. And I think Ms. Bean said it best when she said, do it for passion. Do it because it's a course that's not offered within the West Windsor Plainsboro curriculum that your student really wants to explore an interest that perhaps we haven't found a, a place to put it into our program of studies quite yet, but something that's been a burning passion for them over the years, and they can't wait to dive deeply into that and really explore something meaningful over the summer. So once again, option two was, you know, originally intended as an option to take courses not offered in the building. Um, some students will say, oh, no, I need to do so in order to be able to fit in all the courses that they want to take while they are at high school south. And no, 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 not true. We found beautiful, masterful ways, including um, financial literacy during study hall, which we've also mentioned and touched upon tonight that students can do beginning next year. But one many, many, many ways for students to be able to incorporate all of their interests and explore them to the fullest while they're at south without having to take a summer course. Um, beyond that, 
philosophically, we would hate for your students first real experience of high school South to be taking a pressure filled exam in our commons in August in order to determine whether or not they earn credit in a certain course that they've taken over the summer. We'd rather them utilize summer to volunteer, um, travel, have family time, do those other great things that maybe perhaps they don't have as much time for during the school year. Should your student decide that they still want to do an option two course, Mrs. Bean outlined the procedures earlier in the slides, but we would have the opt or the application available on the district website. The link, I believe, was also placed into the chat. The link went live today. Students have up until March 31st to submit an application. Um, once approved, and they have to wait for that approval email from the school, please, please, please do not go ahead and register for a course until you've received that approval. But once approved, you can register with your chosen course provider. You'll take the course over the summer, and you would sit for that final um, corresponding assessment in August. And then based upon the results and the course and the assessment, we would determine whether or not you are able to earn credit there. Please keep in mind that students may only take one option two course per year, and they are only able throughout their time at High School South to take one course in a subject area. So for example, if they opted to do a history course over the summer, they may not take another history course again if they've earned credit for one. Only one course in a subject area and one course over the um, per year. I saw a bunch of questions running through the chat regarding option two and algebra two, and that's something that I'd also like to address. I know Ms. Bean has done so in the chat. That's definitely not something that we recommend as Algebra 2 um, has shown through research that that's the foundation for success in more advanced math classes. So once again, um, trying to compile a year's worth of work into a very short time is not something that would then likely serve your student well in those more advanced course offerings. So please, please, please think about that. We'd again love your students to be do doing something even more exciting during their time over the summer. Um, if your student does take and pass the West Windsor exam, they will also need to provide their official transcript sent directly from their course provider to us. So that's not something that they could email to us. We need to receive that directly from the course provider. Um, and that will allow us then, if there is space, for us to place your student in the next course which they have requested. There's no guarantee for placement unless, you know, even with that, there aren't any guarantees for placement. So please note that we do our very, very best, but we can't make room for everything necessarily all the time. Um, lots and lots of information through option two are included in that program of studies that you will have access to that's posted currently online through the district website. So it's a very, very valuable resource that you can consult before doing this. And once again, really have that purpose and that passion if there's a reason for your student to take a course over the summer. And we'd really love your first, your student's first introduction to High School South to be at our orientation in August, which will be a phenomenal opportunity to really see our building connect with our upper class students. So please hold off, wait, enjoy that time and enjoy your summer. And I am going to pass on to the next question from Ms. Walsh. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, just so you know, I, I can see there's many, many questions in the chats. Um, we're going to hopefully answer some of them through our questions, but at the end, we're just sort of going to try to see what the themes are and see if we can um, answer some of the general questions, especially if we can sort of see what some of the, many of the questions are similar uh, along the same line. So. Uh, just be patient with that. The next question is, um, are students required to volunteer, which actually is a question in the chat. So we're going to get to that. Um, students are not required. It is not a graduation requirement to volunteer. We don't keep track of hours um, or anything like that. There's nothing related to graduation requirements with regards to volunteering. Um, having said that, it's nice to volunteer um, and we encourage students. Um, I always say there's like three things in high school is, um, you know, do well in your classes, um, get involved in the community and give back a little. So the volunteering part would be the give back a little. Um, 
We have service organizations at our school. Many of our teams uh, provide service opportunities from within this with the athletic teams. Um, and then, of course, there's a lot of things in the community where people looking for volunteers for a variety of reasons. I always um, tell students to seek out meaningful experiences and a true volunteer is sharing your gifts. So, for example, I coach girls golf. And so hopefully my players love golf. So they get involved in the first T program. They get involved in Special Olympics and they share their gift and passion for golf with others who are trying to uh, learn the same thing, but maybe not have the same uh, opportunities in their um, life to, to learn golf uh, if it weren't for programs like Special Olympics or First T. Uh, many of our musicians play at senior centers and share their love for music there. Uh, there's a whole host of things to do. So we encourage students to volunteer. We provide volunteer opportunities that come through our office. We post them in the classroom coaches provide volunteer opportunities and so forth, but there's no graduation requirement to volunteer a certain number of hours. And that's a really common question. So um, that's my answer. Um, next up is um, Ms. Molly Rooney. Hi everyone. Um, again, I wanna reiterate what everyone said today. It was wonderful seeing your students today at Grover. They were very enthusiastic. They had a lot of great questions. Um, I'm lucky enough to be one of the peer leader advisors and they came along with us today as well. So they got to meet the peer leaders. And, and my question is about what supports uh, we have in place for the freshmen during their first year. Um, one of which is the peer leader program where the peer leaders actually start working with the um, ninth graders as soon as freshman orientation, which happens at the end of August. I know that was a question in the chat. That date will um, be coming out before the end of the school year, but typically it's the end of August where we invite the ninth graders and any new students to district over to High School South for a two hour program um, where they get to know the administrators, security, us, um, and again, their peer leaders and get a tour of the building. So that is definitely something to look forward to and we kick off the year with that freshman orientation, making sure um, they know who their counselors are and they know their other supports in the building um, like uh, peer Peer leaders. Um, throughout the year, the peer leaders also meet with the freshmen um, in peer group. Um, that's an opportunity, again, for the, the students to uh, get that student voice and to get that expertise from the older uh, role models in the building. Um, they talk about courses, they talk about time management, they talk about um, good decision making, and that's something that happens throughout the year. Um, we also have other supports like our homework tutorial program, which runs after school and allows for students to work with actual teachers in the building. Um, on their studies. Um, and again, that's something that students uh, get recommended for um, or asked to be part of, and that typically runs all year as well. Um, additionally, again, we have a student assistant counselor over at South, just like at Grover, we have UBHC uh, counselors as well. Um, all of your students will be assigned to one of us that you see here on the panel tonight for all four years. Um, we meet with the freshmen early on in their freshman year to touch base with how things are going. Um, we allow for students to come and visit and see us during their lunchtime or book appointments with us during a study hall, which is another great use of their study hall time. We also have, and I just want to put in a plug because I will be the AVID counselor for next year's cohort, um, that AVID program, which of course is a supportive program that we talked about um, earlier in the, in the show, so in the slideshow, um, and more information will be coming about that as well. So again, lots of supports. One of the things that we said to the students today is um, making sure that they communicate um, when they need help to advocate for themselves. Those are all the skills that we'll be looking to help the students do, and we are there to help them do it throughout their four years. And the last question, um, Ms. Walsh, before we get to um, the questions in the chat, um, maybe again, we can make a plug for their counselor at, at the eighth grade because they are certainly very um, informed at the middle school so they can reach out. But um, in that sense, in terms of the questions in the chat right now, should we go to that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we can go to that. Just as, as Ms. Rooney said, your eighth grade counselor uh, can certainly help you. I just tried to, um, to see some of the general questions in the chat. So I'll try to um, address them. Um, somebody asked about technical school for the night for ninth graders. And um, we do have a wonderful tech school program that starts in grade 11 and 12. We have a shared time program uh, when they are in their sophomore year prior 
to scheduling for 11th grade, um, they'll get lots of information about the technical school. Um, so that's something that is. And they may also be asking on. about the four-year program, Miss Walsh. They might be asking about the oh, four-year four yeah. programs of the academy. Um, and you definitely that that is there's there's four different four-year programs over at the Mercer County Technical Schools, um, and that information is on their website. Um, and it's like going to a specialized school. So that information you would want to find on the Mercer County Tech School uh, website for those academies uh, programs. Later on in high school, if a student chooses, we do have shared time opportunities later on in their high school. Um, we're seeing a lot of questions too about classes later on throughout high school. I think it's really important um, that we just reiterate that we gave the students today um, a booklet just for them as ninth graders curated just for them on purpose so that they really can focus on their ninth grade year. We want them to be aware of, of graduation requirements. Of course, we want them to know all these wonderful courses that they can take throughout the next four years, but we really wanna make sure that we are focused um, on what they're doing as freshmen. This is a big transition for them um, going into the high school. So one of the things that we said to them today, and hopefully they did, is they brought those booklets home and they shared them with you. We also created a worksheet. I'm seeing a lot of questions in the chat about, you know, how many classes that they take, how many electives. They have a scheduling worksheet that outlines exactly for them exactly what they need to choose for next year. Um, we encourage the students to bring that with them um, when they meet with us in March so that we can see their train of thought that we know that they had those conversations at home. Um, and even in the chat too about the difference between college prep and honors. We've talked a lot about eligibility tonight. Many of the students may be eligible um, for multiple honors classes. The best resource that they can utilize right, you know, right now is their current year teachers who are going to know a lot about the difference between the college prep and honors level in terms of homework, in terms of rigor, in terms of content. Um, so we definitely encourage them to have those conversations with their teacher, with their current counselor, obviously with their parents, with that goal of, of balance, balance, balance. So I know a lot of the chat was about that as well. Um, yep, those were in my same notes as far as the plan. You should definitely talk to your child about the materials that we gave to them today because mm -hmm. they'll be able to have one piece of paper that has all their ninth grade options available to them um, to have the to start those conversations. And I believe Ms. Capadia was going to post a copy of that in her Google Classroom as well. Right. Um, so that students can access it later in case they misplaced it or need another copy. Mm -hmm. Right. And you'll and see on that sheet, there's one elective available to them in ninth grade, um, just because there's so many other requirements as they get into 11th and 12th grade. And that's some one of the other questions. Their schedule does open up. And so then if you look at the program of studies that's on our district website, you'll see later on, there'll be some options, many more options for them as their schedule opens up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And some other questions about eligibility. Um, when a student schedules, no matter what year, they can only schedule for what they are eligible for. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Students can only schedule for what they are eligible for. Those eligibility requirements are, are laid out in the program of studies. Um, however, we have an eligibility review process that we, we talked about earlier, but at scheduling time with the counselor, um, we can only schedule them for what they are eligible for at that time. Um, if they want to seek out an eligibility review, we do have that process as well. Um, and again, the program of studies, I can't say more about it. It's, it's so clear. Every single course is laid out with every single prerequisite and every single eligibility requirement. Um, so definitely take a look at those resources online. Um, I think that was a lot of the questions. Um, there were some questions about credits and 120 credits. Your child will graduate with lots of credits. Uh, so our students take um, seven courses per year. So you do not have to worry about them having credits or getting credits. Um, we kind of handle that piece. So don't kind of get hung up on the credit piece. New Jersey requires 120 uh, or, or district requires 120 credits and our kids typically graduate with like 140 credits. Um, and one other question I just want to just say very quickly, someone asked if you can um, 
get into college if you never take an honors or an AP class. A hundred percent, you can get into college without ever taking an honors or an AP class. Uh, you take what's appropriate for you. There's a lot of colleges out there. Uh, they'll still have plenty of options. Anybody else see anything or have anything they want to add? And I see that many of the questions were also answered throughout. Um, so thank you so much, uh, caregivers and guardians for joining us this evening. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Please visit the website. All of the information you're requesting is available there. Uh, and we are really excited to welcome your students to High School South as the class of 20, who, who remembers, 2020... Seven. Seven. Seven, yeah. Woo! I know. I told them that this morning. They were pretty surprised. Um, so anyway, please, you know, if you wanted to watch the presentation again, it'll be available as, as well as the slideshow um, and everything else you can possibly imagine on our district website under the counseling. So thank you to our counselors, our supervisors who joined us this evening, um, Ms. Sankata, and just a really happy welcome from all of us. And, um, you know, you'll have a great four years at High School South. Have a good evening. I just want to put one last shameless oh. plug. I put it in the chat. Um, <laughs> if you're looking to get your child some pirate gear, I mm. put a chat in there. I put a link in there. You can get a scarf. I had it on today. Oh, Miss Smith has it on. 